Question 1. What is the primary cause of foodborne illness? A. Leftovers stored for more than a week. B. Pathogens in food. C. Eating food past its expiration date. D. Food cooked in a microwave. Answer. B. Pathogens in food. Pathogens, including bacteria, viruses, and parasites, are the primary cause of foodborne illnesses. Question 2. How should hands be washed to ensure food safety? A. With cold water for 5 seconds. B. With warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds. C. With hand sanitizer only. D. Wiping on a cloth apron. Answer. B. With warm water and soap for at least 20 seconds. This method effectively removes germs and contaminants from hands. Question 3. At what minimum temperature should poultry be cooked? A. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius. B. 155 degree Fahrenheit, 68 degree Celsius. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. D. 175 degree Fahrenheit, 80 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius, cooking poultry to an internal temperature of 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius ensures that harmful bacteria are killed. Question 4. What is cross-contamination? A. Mixing cooked and raw foods in the same dish. B. The transfer of bacteria from one surface or food to another. C. Cooking food at high temperatures. D. Using the same cutting board for vegetables and meat without washing it. Answer. B. The transfer of bacteria from one surface or food to another. Preventing cross-contamination is crucial for food safety. Question 5. Describe the temperature danger zone. A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Negative 18 degrees Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 41 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius to 5 degree Celsius. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degree Celsius to 57 degree Celsius. D. 135 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius to 74 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 41 degree Fahrenheit to 135 degree Fahrenheit, 5 degrees Celsius to 57 degrees Celsius. This range is where bacteria can grow rapidly, making it dangerous for food safety. Question 6. How long can TCS food safely remain in the temperature danger zone? A. Less than 2 hours. B. Up to 4 hours. C. Up to 6 hours. D indefinitely, as long as it is refrigerated afterward. Answer. A. Less than two hours. TCES food should not be in the temperature danger zone for more than two hours to prevent bacterial growth. Question 7. What are the critical steps for hand washing? A. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, dry. B. Soak, shake, air dry. C. Spray with sanitizer. Wipe with a paper towel. D. Dip in warm water, dry with a clean towel. Answer. A. Wet, lather, scrub, rinse, dry. Following these steps ensures hands are properly cleaned. Question 8. How should ready to eat foods be stored in relation to raw meats? A. Below raw meats. B. Beside raw meats, if there is a divider. C. Above raw meats. D in the same container as raw meats. Answer. C. Above raw meats. This prevents juices from raw meats from contaminating ready-to-eat foods. Question 9. What is the proper procedure for cooling hot foods? A. Leave at room temperature until cool. B. Place directly into the freezer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. D. Cover tightly and place in the refrigerator immediately. Answer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. 
Rapid cooling methods help prevent bacterial growth. Question 10. Identify the major food allergens recognized by the FDA. A. Gluten, caffeine, and corn. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans. C. Sugar, salt, pepper, water. D. Beef, chicken, pork, tomatoes. Answer. B. Milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, tree nuts, peanuts, wheat, soybeans. These are the eight major allergens that must be managed in food service. Question 11. How often should food contact surfaces be sanitized? A. Once a day. B. After each use. C. Once a week. D. Only when visibly dirty. Answer. B. After each use. Regular sanitization of food contact surfaces prevents cross-contamination. Question 12. What is the difference between cleaning and sanitizing? A. Cleaning removes dirt. Sanitizing reduces pathogens. B. There is no difference. C. Sanitizing makes something look clean. D. Cleaning uses soap. Sanitizing uses water. Answer. A. Cleaning removes dirt. Sanitizing reduces pathogens. Both are essential for food safety. Question 13. At what temperature should refrigerated food be stored? A. Below 32 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius. B. At or below 40 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degree Celsius. C. At or above 50 degree Fahrenheit. 10 degree Celsius. D. At room temperature. Answer. B. At or below 40 degree Fahrenheit. 4 degree Celsius. This temperature slows bacterial growth. Question 14. Describe the process for receiving food deliveries safely. A. Accept all deliveries, no inspection needed. B. Inspect for proper temperature, damage, and expiration dates. C. Store immediately, inspect later. D. Only inspect meat and dairy products. Answer. B. Inspect for proper temperature, damage, and expiration dates. Proper inspection ensures food safety from the start. Question 15. How should a food recall be handled? A. Ignore unless customers complain. B. Remove affected products and follow manufacturer or regulatory guidance. C. Use recalled products quickly before news spreads. D. Sell recalled products at a discount. Answer. B. Remove affected products and follow manufacturer or regulatory guidance. This approach protects customers from potential harm. Question 16. What is an HACCP plan and why is it important? A. A pricing strategy for menu items. B. A decoration theme for restaurants. C. A system to identify and control food safety hazards. D. A guide for customer service. Answer. C. A system to identify and control food safety hazards. HACCP ensures food is safe from production to consumption. Question 17. What are the symptoms of foodborne illness? A. Increased energy and alertness. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever. C. Hunger and thirst. D. Sleepiness and calmness. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever. These are common symptoms that may indicate a foodborne illness. Question 18. How should gloves be used in food service? A. Reused for different tasks to save on costs. B. Worn at all times, regardless of the task. C. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. D. Optional if hands are washed. Answer. C. Changed between tasks and when torn or soiled. Proper use of gloves prevents cross-contamination. Question 19. What is the proper way to thaw frozen food? A. At room temperature. B. In hot water. C. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave. D. On the counter overnight. Answer. C. In the refrigerator, under cold running water, or in the microwave. These methods prevent the growth of harmful bacteria. Question 20. 
How can you prevent pest infestations in a food service operation? A. Leaving doors and windows open for ventilation. B. Regular cleaning and sealing entry points. C. Using only organic pest control methods. D. Ignoring small pests as they do not pose a risk. Answer. B. Regular cleaning and sealing entry points. This approach minimizes the risk of pest infestations by eliminating access and food sources. Question 21. What are the guidelines for serving food safely to vulnerable populations? A. Serve food as quickly as possible, regardless of temperature. B. Use higher cooking temperatures for all foods. C. Prioritize taste over safety to accommodate preferences. D. Follow stricter food safety protocols, including using pasteurized products. Answer. D. Follow stricter food safety protocols, including using pasteurized products. Vulnerable populations require more stringent food safety measures to prevent illness. Question 22. How should a food worker report illness? A. Only if they have a fever. B. Immediately to their supervisor, especially if they have symptoms like vomiting or diarrhea. C. Wait until the end of their shift to avoid disruption. D. Report only if diagnosed by a doctor. Answer. B. Immediately to their supervisor, especially if they have symptoms like vomiting or diarrhea. Prompt reporting helps prevent the spread of foodborne illness. Question 23. What procedures should be followed when a foodborne illness is suspected? A. Continue business as usual until more information is available. B. Isolate the suspected food, inform the local health department, and cooperate with the investigation. C. Discard all food in the establishment. D. Offer discounts to patrons as an apology. Answer. B. Isolate the suspected food, inform the local health department, and cooperate with the investigation. This approach helps identify the source and prevent further cases. Question 24. How can time temperature abuse be prevented? A. By leaving food out for no more than four hours. B. Cooling and reheating food rapidly through the danger zone. C. Cooking food at lower temperatures for longer. D. Storing all food at room temperature. Answer. B. Cooling and reheating food rapidly through the danger zone. Quick transitions through the danger zone reduce the risk of bacterial growth. Question 25. What practices ensure the safe use of knives? A. Using the same knife for all tasks to minimize cleaning. B. Keeping knives sharpened and stored properly when not in use. C. Sharing knives between staff to ensure efficiency. D. Cleaning knives once a day regardless of use. Answer. B. Keeping knives sharpened and stored properly when not in use. Proper maintenance and storage of knives reduce the risk of injury and cross-contamination. Question 26. How should chemical sanitizers be tested for effectiveness? A. By tasting food after it's been sanitized. B. Using test strips to ensure proper concentration. C. Smelling the sanitizer to determine strength. D. Guessing based on the color of the sanitizer. Answer. B. Using test strips to ensure proper concentration. This ensures that the sanitizer is effective without being overly strong or weak. Question 27. What is the importance of supplier selection in ensuring food safety? A. Lower price suppliers are always the best option. B. Suppliers are responsible for food safety, not the restaurant. C. Choosing reputable suppliers who follow safety standards. D. Selecting suppliers based only on proximity. Answer. C. Choosing reputable suppliers who follow safety standards. Reliable suppliers are crucial for initial food safety. Question 28. How can technology be used to enhance food safety? A. By replacing all human workers with robots. B. Limiting technology use to customer service functions. C. Implementing digital logs for temperature and sanitation checks. D. Using technology only for reservations and ordering. Answer. C. Implementing digital logs for temperature and sanitation checks. 
This improves accuracy and compliance with food safety protocols. Question 29. What are the best practices for storing dry goods? A. Next to the dishwasher for easy access. B. In a cool, dry place, off the floor and away from walls. C. In the warmest part of the kitchen. D. Uncovered to ensure proper ventilation. Answer. B. In a cool, dry place, off the floor and away from walls. This prevents contamination and maintains the quality of dry goods. Question 30. Describe the steps for effectively managing leftovers. A. Discard all leftovers to avoid risks. B. Cool rapidly to save temperatures and store properly. C. Leave at room temperature for no more than 8 hours. D. Reheat once before storing to kill any bacteria. Answer. B. Cool rapidly to save temperatures and store properly. Proper cooling and storage prevent bacterial growth in leftovers. Question 31. How can cross-contact with allergens be minimized? A. Ignoring minor allergen traces in dishes. B. Using separate equipment and preparation areas for allergen-free meals. C. Cooking allergenic foods at higher temperatures. D. Cleaning utensils with a cloth between uses. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and preparation areas for allergen-free meals. This reduces the risk of allergen cross-contact. Question 32. What is the importance of personal hygiene in food safety? A. It is less important than the cooking process. B. Good hygiene practices prevent the spread of pathogens. C. Personal hygiene is only necessary for front-of-house staff. D. Washing hands once a day is sufficient for food safety. Answer. B. Good hygiene practices prevent the spread of pathogens. Proper personal hygiene is essential for all food handlers. Question 33. How should food service workers deal with cuts or wounds? A. Cover with a bandage and continue working. B. Cover with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves before handling food. C. Ignore minor cuts as they pose no risk. D. Use a tissue and tape as a temporary measure. Answer. B. Cover with a waterproof bandage and wear gloves before handling food. This prevents contamination of food by bodily fluids. Question 34. What are the guidelines for manual dishwashing in a three-compartment sink? A. Wash, rinse, air dry. B. Soak, rinse with hot water, air dry. C. Wash with detergent, rinse, sanitize, air dry. D. Wash, use bleach, then rinse. Answer. C. Wash with detergent, rinse, sanitize, air dry. This ensures that dishes are cleaned and sanitized properly. Question 35. How should food temperatures be monitored? A. By feeling the food with bare hands. B. Using a calibrated thermometer and checking regularly. C. Guessing based on cooking time. D. Only checking temperatures when food looks undercooked. Answer. B. Using a calibrated thermometer and checking regularly. Accurate temperature monitoring is crucial for food safety. Question 36. Describe the process for calibrating a thermometer. A. Adjusting it based on the temperature of the room. B. Placing it in boiling water or ice water and adjusting to the correct temperature. C. Calibrating it against another thermometer for accuracy. D. Thermometers do not require calibration. Answer. B. Placing it in boiling water or ice water and adjusting to the correct temperature. Regular calibration ensures accuracy. Question 37. What actions should be taken to maintain food safety during power outages? A. Use candles to heat food. B. Keep refrigeration and freezer doors closed and use alternative cooling methods if necessary. C. Discard all food immediately. D. Continue to operate normally, assuming the power will return soon. Answer. B. Keep refrigeration and freezer doors closed and use alternative cooling methods if necessary. This minimizes temperature fluctuations and preserves food safety. Question 38. How should a food service operation respond to a water supply contamination alert? A. 
Ignore the alert until customers complain. B. Boil water before use, or use bottled water for drinking and food preparation. C. Use flavored beverages instead of water. D. Filter water using a coffee filter. Answer. B. Boil water before use, or use bottled water for drinking and food preparation. Ensuring water safety is crucial to prevent contamination. Question 39. What is the role of a food safety manager? A. To manage the restaurant's finances. B. To oversee food safety practices and ensure compliance with regulations. C. To cook and prepare meals. D. To serve food to customers. Answer. B. To oversee food safety practices and ensure compliance with regulations. The food safety manager plays a critical role in maintaining a safe dining environment. Question 40. How can the risk of foodborne pathogens be minimized during food preparation? A. By cooking food at low temperatures. B. Ignoring cleanliness and focusing on flavor. C. Following proper cooking, cleaning, and storage practices. D. Using only organic ingredients. Answer. C. Following proper cooking, cleaning, and storage practices. Adhering to food safety guidelines reduces the risk of pathogen contamination. Question 41. Describe the procedures for safe ice handling. A. Use clean, gloved hands to scoop ice. B. Use a glass to scoop ice directly from the machine. C. Utilize a dedicated ice scoop and store it outside the ice machine. D. Utilize a dedicated ice scoop and store it properly when not in use. Answer. D. Utilize a dedicated ice scoop and store it properly when not in use. This prevents contamination of the ice used in food and beverage service. Question 42. How should food be labeled and dated in a commercial kitchen? A. With the name of the person who prepared it. B. With a description of the food and its expiration date. C. With the price of the food item. D. Labels are not necessary if the food is used quickly. Answer. B. With a description of the food and its expiration date. Proper labeling helps manage inventory and ensures that food is used within its safe shelf life. Question 43. What are the guidelines for effective pest control in a food service operation? A. Regular application of insecticides during business hours. B. Maintaining a clean environment, sealing entry points, and working with a professional pest control service. C. Keeping doors and windows open to allow pests to leave. D. Ignoring small pests since they do not pose a significant threat. Answer. B. Maintaining a clean environment, sealing entry points, and working with a professional pest control service. Effective pest management is essential for food safety. Question 44. How should food be stored to prevent cross-contamination? A. Store all food on the floor to maximize shelf space. B. Store raw meats above ready-to-eat foods. C. Store ready-to-eat foods above raw meats. D. Mix raw and cooked foods to save space. Answer. C. Store ready-to-eat foods above raw meats. This prevents juices from raw meats, which may contain pathogens, from contaminating prepared or ready-to-eat foods. Question 45. What are the guidelines for cooking seafood safely? A. Cook to a minimum internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, 63 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds. B. Seafood does not need to be cooked if it smells fresh. C. Cooking temperatures for seafood are lower than for poultry. D. Freeze seafood for 24 hours before cooking to kill parasites. Answer. A. Cook to a minimum internal temperature of 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius, for 15 seconds. This ensures that harmful microorganisms are destroyed, making the seafood safe to eat. Question 46. How can a food service operation ensure the safety of buffet and self-service areas? A. By allowing customers to use their hands to pick up food. B. By using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. C. By only offering pre-packaged foods. D. 
buffet, and self-service areas do not require monitoring? Answer B. By using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. These practices help maintain food safety in self-service settings. Question 47. What are the legal requirements for food safety training and certification? A. Optional for all food service employees. B. Required only for managers and supervisors. C. Mandatory for all employees involved in food handling. D. Dependent on the size of the food service establishment. Answer. C. Mandatory for all employees involved in food handling. Proper training ensures that all staff are knowledgeable about safe food handling practices. Question 48. How should food service workers handle food safely at outdoor events? A. By following the same food safety protocols as indoor events. B. Food safety is less strict at outdoor events due to fresh air. C. Using disposable dishes and utensils only. D. Cooking all food in advance and serving it cold. Answer. A. By following the same food safety protocols as indoor events. Outdoor events require the same attention to food safety as those held indoors. Question 49. What practices should be followed to ensure the safe use of cutting boards? A. Use the same cutting board for meat and vegetables to save time. B. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats, seafood, vegetables, and ready-to-eat foods. C. Cleaning cutting boards once at the end of the day is sufficient. D. Wooden cutting boards are prohibited in commercial kitchens. Answer. B. Use separate cutting boards for raw meats, seafood, vegetables, and ready-to-eat foods. This prevents cross-contamination between different types of foods. Question 50. Describe the importance of maintaining proper food temperatures during service. A. It enhances the flavor of the food. B. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria and ensures food safety. C. Proper temperatures are only necessary for hot foods. D. Food temperatures during service are not as critical as during storage. Answer. B. It prevents the growth of harmful bacteria and ensures food safety. Keeping foods at safe temperatures during service is crucial to prevent foodborne illness. Question 51. How should waste be managed in a food service operation? A. By combining all waste types together for simplicity. B. By sorting recyclable, compostable, and landfill waste according to local regulations. C. Incinerating all waste on site. D. Dumping oil and grease down the sink to prevent solid waste accumulation. Answer. B. By sorting recyclable, compostable, and landfill waste, according to local regulations. Proper waste management practices help reduce environmental impact and maintain sanitary conditions. Question 52. What considerations should be made when designing a kitchen to enhance food safety? A. Maximizing the use of open flames and fryers. B. Ensuring an efficient workflow and minimizing cross-contamination risks. C. Placing the dishwasher and refrigerator next to each other to save space. D. Using the same space for food preparation and dishwashing. Answer. B. Ensuring an efficient workflow and minimizing cross-contamination risks. A well-designed kitchen promotes food safety through logical arrangement and separation of different work areas. Question 53. How should food service operations handle food donations safely? A. Donating only non-perishable items. B. Following food safety guidelines, ensuring donated food is safe and properly labeled. C. Donating expired or leftover food only. D. Food donations are discouraged due to safety concerns. Answer. B. Following food safety guidelines, ensuring donated food is safe and properly labeled. This ensures that donated food is safe for consumption by recipients. Question 54. What are the guidelines for using gloves in food service? A. Gloves are not necessary if hands are washed regularly. B. Reusing gloves for different tasks to save resources. C. Changing gloves between tasks and when damaged or soiled. D. Wearing gloves replaces the need for hand washing. Answer. C. 
changing gloves between tasks and when damaged or soiled. Proper glove use prevents cross-contamination and maintains food safety. Question 55. How should foodborne illness outbreaks be investigated and managed? A. By closing the establishment until the source is identified. B. Reporting the outbreak to health authorities, cooperating with investigations, and taking corrective actions. C. Ignoring customer complaints unless they are verified by a doctor. D. Blaming suppliers and avoiding responsibility. Answer. B. Reporting the outbreak to health authorities, cooperating with investigations, and taking corrective actions. This approach helps identify the source, prevent further illness, and restore public trust. Question 56. What are the best practices for reheating TCS foods? A. Reheat to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds within 2 hours. B. Using a microwave is the only safe method for reheating. C. Reheating foods multiple times is acceptable. The TCS foods do not require reheating if they were initially cooked properly. Answer. A. Reheat to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit, 74 degrees Celsius, for 15 seconds within 2 hours. This ensures that any pathogens present are destroyed, making the food safe to eat. Question 57. Describe the process for safely incorporating wild game into the menu. A. Serving wild game raw to preserve its natural flavors. B. Freezing wild game to kill parasites before cooking to recommended temperatures. C. Treating wild game the same as commercially raised meats. D. Avoiding the use of wild game due to safety concerns. Answer. B. Freezing wild game to kill parasites before cooking to recommended temperatures. This process ensures the safety of wild game for consumption. Question 58. How should a food service operation manage the disposal of fats, oils, and grease? A. Pouring them down the drain with hot water. B. Using a grease trap and disposing of waste according to local regulations. C. Storing them in containers outside without a lid. D. Reusing fats, oils, and grease for cooking to reduce waste. Answer. B. Using a grease trap and disposing of waste according to local regulations. Proper disposal prevents plumbing issues and environmental damage. Question 59. How can food safety be maintained during transportation? A. Transporting foods at room temperature to minimize energy use. B. Keeping hot foods hot and cold foods cold using insulated containers. C. Stacking food containers to save space regardless of temperature. D. Leaving foods uncovered to prevent condensation. Answer. B. Keeping hot foods hot and cold foods cold using insulated containers. Proper temperature control during transportation is crucial to prevent foodborne illness. Question 60. Describe the role of active managerial control in ensuring food safety. A. Delegating all responsibilities to employees without oversight. B. Taking proactive steps to prevent foodborne illness through training, monitoring, and correcting food handling practices. C. Focusing solely on customer service and leaving food safety to local health inspectors. D. Implementing food safety measures only after an incident occurs. Answer. B. Taking proactive steps to prevent foodborne illness through training, monitoring, and correcting food handling practices. Active managerial control is key to maintaining a safe food service operation. Question 61. How should food service operations prepare for health inspections? A. By temporarily improving cleanliness and food handling practices. B. Maintaining consistent food safety practices and records as per regulations. C. Offering incentives to health inspectors. D. Closing the operation during inspection times. Answer. B. Maintaining consistent food safety practices and records as per regulations. This ensures compliance and readiness for inspections at any time. Question 62. What are the critical control points in a typical food service operation? A. Points where financial decisions impact the business. B. 
Steps in the food handling process where risks can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. C. Only the points of cooking and serving food. D. The beginning and end of the workday. Answer. B. Steps in the food handling process where risks can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. Identifying and managing CCPs are crucial for food safety. Question 63. How can a food service operation reduce its environmental impact while maintaining food safety? A. Ignoring food safety in favor of eco-friendly practices. B. Utilizing sustainable practices, such as composting and recycling, without compromising food safety. C. Using disposable plastics for all food service. D. Limiting the use of water for cleaning and sanitizing. Answer. B. Utilizing sustainable practices, such as composting and recycling, without compromising food safety. It's important to balance environmental concerns with strict food safety standards. Question 64. Describe the procedures for handling chemical spills in a food service environment. A. Covering the spill with a cloth and continuing work. B. Immediately cleaning the spill using appropriate safety equipment and notifying management. C. Ignoring the spill if it's small. D. Rinsing the spill with water only. Answer. B. Immediately cleaning the spill using appropriate safety equipment and notifying management. Quick and safe responses prevent accidents and contamination. Question 65. What are the considerations for selecting and using disposable food service items? A. Choosing the cheapest options available. B. Selecting items based on environmental impact and safety for food contact. C. Using disposable items for all types of food to reduce washing. D. Reusing disposable items to save costs. Answer. B. Selecting items based on environmental impact and safety for food contact. It's vital to consider the quality and safety of disposables in food service. Question 66. How should a food service operation manage employee illness? A. Encouraging sick employees to work unless they have a fever. B. Implementing a policy for reporting illness and excluding symptomatic employees from work. C. Ignoring mild symptoms to avoid staffing shortages. D. Only focusing on illnesses reported by customers. Answer. B. Implementing a policy for reporting illness and excluding symptomatic employees from work. Preventing sick employees from working is key to avoiding the spread of illness. Question 67. Describe the guidelines for cooking and holding temperatures for TCS foods. A. Cooking to minimal internal temperatures based on the type of food and holding hot foods at 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degrees Celsius, or above. B. Cooking all foods to the same temperature and holding at room temperature. C. Focusing on flavor rather than temperature. D. Holding cold foods at room temperature to save refrigerator space. Answer. A. Cooking to minimal internal temperatures based on the type of food and holding hot foods at 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius, or above. Proper temperatures reduce the risk of pathogen growth. Question 68. How can cross-contact of allergens be prevented during food preparation? A. By cooking foods at high temperatures. B. Using separate equipment and areas for allergen-free meals. C. Assuming small amounts of allergens won't cause reactions. D. Washing utensils with water only between uses. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and areas for allergen-free meals. This minimizes the risk of allergen cross-contact, protecting guests with allergies. Question 69. What are the procedures for effective cleaning and sanitizing of food contact surfaces? A. Wiping surfaces with a dry cloth. B. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizer according to manufacturer's instructions. C. Using sanitizer only, skipping soap and water. D. Cleaning only at the end of the day. Answer. B. Cleaning with soap and water, then applying a sanitizer according to manufacturer's instructions. 
This two-step process ensures surfaces are free from food residue and pathogens. Question 70. How should a food service operation respond to emergencies that impact food safety, such as power outages? A. Waiting for instructions from utility companies. B. Continuing to operate normally using manual processes. C. Implementing emergency procedures, such as using alternative cooling and cooking methods. D. Discarding all food immediately without assessment. Answer. C. Implementing emergency procedures, such as using alternative cooling and cooking methods. Preparedness and proper response help maintain food safety during emergencies. Question 71. What are the guidelines for safe food sampling and taste testing? A. Sampling food directly from the cooking pot. B. Using clean utensils for each taste test and avoiding direct contact with the food. C. Allowing customers to sample directly from the buffet. D. Reusing utensils for efficiency. Answer. B. Using clean utensils for each taste test and avoiding direct contact with the food. This prevents contamination of the food being sampled. Question 72. How should food service operations ensure the safety of gluten-free and allergen-free menu items? A. Assuming no cross-contact occurs in the kitchen. B. Preparing these items first before any other food. C. Using dedicated equipment and preparation areas to avoid cross-contact. D. Offering only a limited number of gluten-free or allergen-free items to simplify processes. Answer. C. Using dedicated equipment and preparation areas to avoid cross-contact. This is essential for serving guests with allergies or intolerances safely. Question 73. What are the guidelines for conducting food safety risk assessments within a food service operation? A. Conducting assessments only after an incident. B. Regularly identifying and evaluating potential hazards to implement control measures. C. Delegating risk assessments to new or inexperienced staff. D. Assuming that existing practices are sufficient without review. Answer. B. Regularly identifying and evaluating potential hazards to implement control measures. Ongoing assessments are crucial for proactive food safety management. Question 74. Describe the process for safely handling and storing raw meat, poultry, and seafood. A. Storing above ready-to-eat foods in the refrigerator. B. Keeping at room temperature to marinate. C. Storing separately or below ready-to-eat foods in the refrigerator to prevent drip contamination. D. Freezing immediately after delivery to kill pathogens. Answer. C. Storing separately or below ready-to-eat foods in the refrigerator to prevent drip contamination. This minimizes the risk of cross-contamination. Question 75. How should food service operations manage food safety during peak service times? A. Reducing the frequency of hand washing to save time. B. Skipping temperature checks to expedite service. C. Adhering to established food safety practices despite increased volume. D. Using pre-cooked foods only to avoid cooking under pressure. Answer. C. Adhering to established food safety practices despite increased volume. Maintaining standards ensures food safety is not compromised during busy periods. Question 76. What are the best practices for cooling and reheating TCS foods? A. Cooling rapidly in the freezer and reheating to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. B. Cooling slowly at room temperature and reheating using a microwave only. C. Leaving TCS foods to cool overnight in the refrigerator. D. Reheating foods multiple times to ensure safety. Answer. A. Cooling rapidly in the freezer and reheating to at least 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds. Rapid cooling and proper reheating minimize the risk of bacterial growth. Question 77. How should a food service operation implement a recall procedure for contaminated food? A. Ignoring the recall if the product has been partially used. B. 
removing the product from inventory, informing customers, and following regulatory guidance for disposal or return. C. Continuing to use the product until receiving direct notification from a supplier. D. Selling the product at a discount to minimize losses. Answer. B. Removing the product from inventory, informing customers, and following regulatory guidance for disposal or return. Prompt action protects consumers and maintains trust. Question 78. Describe the process for safely incorporating fermented foods into the menu. A. Using only commercially prepared fermented foods to ensure safety. B. Fermenting foods at room temperature without monitoring pH or salt concentration. C. Preparing and storing according to food safety guidelines specific to fermentation. D. Offering fermented foods as special items that do not require safety considerations. Answer. C. Preparing and storing according to food safety guidelines specific to fermentation. Proper techniques ensure the safety and quality of fermented foods. Question 79. What are the guidelines for managing food safety risks associated with mobile food units and food trucks? A. Following less stringent food safety protocols due to mobility. B. Applying the same food safety standards as stationary kitchens, including temperature control and cleanliness. C. Using only disposable utensils and containers to avoid washing. D. Serving only pre-packaged foods to eliminate cooking on site. Answer. B. Applying the same food safety standards as stationary kitchens, including temperature control and cleanliness. Mobile units must adhere to the same safety regulations to protect public health. Question 80. How can technology enhance traceability and food safety in a commercial kitchen? A. By replacing all manual processes with automated systems. B. Using systems that track food products through all stages of procurement, processing, and service. C. Limiting technology use to customer-facing functions like ordering and payment. D. Avoiding technology to reduce complexity in the kitchen. Answer. B. Using systems that track food products through all stages of procurement, processing, and service. Enhanced traceability helps identify and manage food safety risks more effectively. Question 81. What are the best practices for inventory management to ensure food safety? A. Using the first in, first out, FIFO method. B. Stockpiling inventory to reduce purchasing frequency. C. Storing newer items in front of older ones. D. Only inspecting inventory for spoilage monthly. Answer. A. Using the first in, first out, FIFO. Method, FIFO, ensures that older stock is used before newer stock, reducing the risk of using spoiled ingredients. Question 82. How should a food service operation manage and document food safety training? A. By providing training once and assuming it covers all future employees. B. Keeping detailed records of all training sessions and ensuring ongoing training for all staff. C. Only training managerial staff as they can instruct lower-level employees. D. Using informal verbal training without documentation. Answer. B. Keeping detailed records of all training sessions and ensuring ongoing training for all staff. Documentation and continual education are key to maintaining high food safety standards. Question 83. Describe the importance of water quality in food preparation. A. Water quality has minimal impact on food safety. B. Using only bottled water for cooking and cleaning. C. Ensuring water meets safety standards to prevent contamination. D. Boiling all water used in food preparation regardless of source. Answer. C. Ensuring water meets safety standards to prevent contamination. Safe water is crucial to avoid introducing pathogens into food, Question 84. What are the key elements of a food defense plan? A. Focusing solely on external threats. B. Identifying potential risks, establishing security measures, and training employees on emergency response. C. Installing surveillance cameras at all entrances. D. Limiting access to public areas only. 
Answer, B. Identifying potential risks, establishing security measures, and training employees on emergency response. A comprehensive defense plan protects against intentional contamination. Question 85. How should food service operations manage special dietary requests? A. By suggesting customers with dietary restrictions dine elsewhere. B. Treating all requests as preferences, not necessities. C. Accommodating requests through careful menu planning and staff training. D. Offering a single meal option that meets all common dietary needs. Answer. C. Accommodating requests through careful menu planning and staff training. Proper handling of dietary requests ensures safety and inclusivity for all customers. Question 86. Describe the guidelines for using non-traditional cooking methods, such as sous vide. A. Avoiding these methods due to increased food safety risks. B. Following precise temperature and time controls to ensure safety. C. Using only for desserts and not for meats or vegetables. D. Treating sous vide foods as ready to eat without further cooking. Answer. B. Following precise temperature and time controls to ensure safety. Proper control ensures that foods cooked via methods like sous vide are safe to consume. Question 87. How can a food service operation ensure compliance with local food safety regulations? A. By following the least strict standards to minimize effort. B. Regularly reviewing and adhering to local health codes and regulations. C. Assuming compliance based on past inspections. D. Waiting for violations to be identified during inspections before making changes. Answer. B. Regularly reviewing and adhering to local health codes and regulations. Staying informed and compliant is crucial for legal operation and public health. Question 88. What practices ensure the safe use of knives and other sharp utensils in the kitchen? A. Leaving knives in sinks filled with soapy water. B. Using knife blocks shared between all staff. C. Regularly sharpening and cleaning after each use and storing safely. D. Allowing personal knives to be brought in from home. Answer. C. Regularly sharpening and cleaning after each use and storing safely. Proper care and storage prevent accidents and contamination. Question 89. How should food service workers address gastrointestinal symptoms? A. By taking over the counter medication and continuing to work. B. Reporting symptoms to a supervisor and staying off work until symptom free. C. Drinking plenty of fluids to stay hydrated while working. D. Working in areas away from food preparation. Answer. B. Reporting symptoms to a supervisor and staying off work until symptom-free. Preventing the spread of illness is critical in a food service environment. Question 90. Describe the process for effectively managing food safety during renovations or construction. A. Continuing food service operations without adjustments. B. Temporarily closing or relocating food service areas and implementing additional safety measures. C. Covering food with cloths to protect from construction dust. D. Increasing the use of disposable utensils and plates. Answer. B. Temporarily closing or relocating food service areas and implementing additional safety measures. Ensuring food safety during changes to the physical environment is essential. Question 91. What are the guidelines for safe fermentation and preservation processes in food preparation? A. Fermenting at room temperature without monitoring. B. Following specific safety guidelines, including temperature and pH control. C. Using canned foods as a base for fermentation. D. Fermentation and preservation are not recommended due to high risks. Answer. B. Following specific safety guidelines, including temperature and pH control, controlled fermentation and preservation ensure food safety and quality. Question 92. How should food service operations manage the use of spices and seasonings to ensure safety? A. Storing spices near cooking areas for easy access. B. Keeping them indefinitely as they do not expire. C. Proper storage and rotation and checking for allergen cross-contact. 
D. Using pre-mixed spices only to reduce handling. Answer. C. Proper storage and rotation and checking for allergen cross-contact. This minimizes the risk of contamination and ensures the freshness of spices. Question 93. What are the considerations for designing a kitchen to promote food safety? A. Prioritizing aesthetic appeal over functionality. B. Ensuring an efficient layout that minimizes cross-contamination risk. C. Placing cooking equipment far from washing areas to save space. D. Designing with minimal equipment to reduce cleaning needs. Answer. B. Ensuring an efficient layout that minimizes cross-contamination risk. A well-thought-out design supports safe food handling practices. Question 94. How can effective menu planning contribute to food safety? A. By limiting the menu to raw foods only. B. Incorporating a variety of high-risk foods to diversify offerings. C. Designing menus that allow for proper use and rotation of ingredients to minimize waste and reduce the risk of using spoiled items. D. Planning menus that require minimal cooking to speed up service. Answer. C. Designing menus that allow for proper use and rotation of ingredients to minimize waste and reduce the risk of using spoiled items. Thoughtful planning supports both food safety and sustainability. Question 95. Describe the procedures for safe manual dishwashing. A. Rinsing dishes with cold water only. B. Washing with hot soapy water, rinsing, sanitizing, and air drying. C. Soaking dishes in sanitizer before washing. D. Using a single compartment sink for all steps. Answer. B. Washing with hot soapy water, rinsing, sanitizing, and air drying. This sequence ensures that dishes are cleaned and sanitized effectively. Question 96. What are the guidelines for maintaining safe water quality in a food service operation? A. Regularly boiling all water used in the operation. B. Using only bottled water for cooking and drinking. C. Regular testing and adherence to public health standards for water safety. D. Filtering tap water with a basic kitchen filter. Answer. C. Regular testing and adherence to public health standards for water safety. Ensuring water quality is essential for preventing foodborne illnesses. Question 97. How should a food service operation respond to a boil water advisory? A. Ignoring the advisory until confirmation of contamination. B. Boiling water for at least one minute before use or using bottled water for consumption and food preparation. C. Using water directly from the tap as boiling is time-consuming. D. Stopping all operations until the advisory is lifted. Answer. B. Boiling water for at least one minute before use or using bottled water for consumption and food preparation. This ensures that all water used is safe from contaminants. Question 98. Describe the steps for calibrating a thermometer used in food service. A. Adjusting the thermometer based on the room's ambient temperature. B. Placing the thermometer in boiling water or ice water and adjusting it to read 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, or 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius, respectively. C. Calibrating once a year by a professional. D. Thermometers do not require calibration in a professional setting. Answer. B. Placing the thermometer in boiling water or ice water and adjusting it to read 212 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Celsius, or 32 degree Fahrenheit, 0 degree Celsius, respectively. Accurate calibration ensures reliable temperature readings. Question 99. What are the guidelines for serving food safely to vulnerable populations? A. Serving the same food as to the general population, but in smaller portions. B. Using pasteurized products, cooking foods to proper temperatures, and avoiding high-risk foods. C. Prioritizing convenience over safety for these populations. D. Focusing solely on taste preferences. Answer. B. Using pasteurized products, cooking foods to proper temperatures, and avoiding high-risk foods. 
special precautions protect those who are more susceptible to foodborne illnesses? Question 100. How can food service operations ensure the safety of buffet and self-service areas? A. By minimizing the number of items offered to reduce risks. B. Regularly replacing all items, regardless of how long they've been out. C. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. D. Allowing customers to use their personal utensils to serve themselves. Answer. C. Using sneeze guards, keeping foods at correct temperatures, and providing serving utensils. These measures help maintain the safety and integrity of self-service food offerings.